Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Bring y'all in a little closer where you can see and hear better. Slight breeze today, but it's time to burn some black powder. Uh, it's hot, but I got a little bit of shade. Finally got a little bit of free time. Uh, and I'm ready to start getting this muzzle loader dialed in. Now, I have had a lot of fun with this pillow. <laughs> And I really hate to relinquish it, but I have got to get serious now on this. And so we're going to retire the pillow for temporary means. I made me a sandbag is what I did. This is a pair of old blue jeans. I filled it full of sand. I mean, it's literally a sandbag. So sandbag, rifle. Oh, we're going to have to do better than that. We're going to pull it up here. Get everything set up because I want my scar. Oh, yeah, that is, that is fine right there. All right. I don't have a lot of powder. There's a slight breeze, so I tied a feather up over there right on the other side of this little old pond. I'll turn where you can look across here. So we're shooting about 50 yards, might be closer to 60. I hadn't really put a range finder on it. And you can see my target right down in there. And that feather is dangling up there. I don't know if you can see it. Now you can see a little bit better. So we've we got our stuff and I'm just gonna scatter everything out on the table. I did not bring my cleaning ramrod. I had been bringing it, but I forgot about it actually. Um, I think today what I'm going to do is adjust my powder load. Oh, I was shooting 65 grains of powder the other day. So first thing I want to do is swab this out. So what I'm what I'm attempting to do now is see if I can tighten my groups down and, and let's actually be serious about seeing what this rifle will actually do. Oh, I hope I don't jam that down in there. And I don't have anything to get it out with. Yeah, it's fairly clean. I'm going to just leave my ramrod out. This, and I was shooting 65 grains. What I think I'm going to do is go to... Uh, I think I'm going to go to 80. And the reason I'm going to go to 80, and that's a good bit of a step, to see if that scatters out more or if it tightens up. If it tightens up, well, then I can start going up or down in very small, you know, five grains of powder. So we went from 6 to 5 every. That's about 15 grains of powder. Um... And the next thing is I would like to shoot around 80 grains because that'll make sure I get good penetration through a deer, have blood out the backside because I am not just merely target hunting. We're trying to get set up to, to hunt with this rifle, so. Put a little bit of much powder there. And the next problem I've got right today is we're running low on balls. So we're shooting round balls. I have my patch material here. And you know, for me making knives, I ain't even got a patch knife with me today. I left it at the house. Not to worry, not to worry. I got a pocket knife I need to be using anyway. This is one that was sent to me the other day. So thank you. We're gonna make it a patch knife today. Now, if if I don't get no good improvements with my with my uh, changing powder, then we'll start changing patch material and patch thickness. 
Ben, this is what I have for patch material. I want to see if in fact it will work. And that works, pocket knife works just as good as a patch knife in reality, y'all. As much as some of us probably don't like to admit that. Ah, <laughs> you know, I like my knives, man. All right, get my caliper here. We just gonna shoot. We not. I'm on. We shooting these CCI caps. All right, back y'all up. By the time we get ready to film, I hear Jr's airplane flying over. So. Those of you that are new, this is the Hawkenstein, somebody dubbed it. I called it the Frankenstein, but I like the Hawkenstein name. I think that may be what people call some of them that they put together out of scrap parts. Uh, this is an Investa arm stock. It is a 50 caliber Thompson Center Renegade barrel, a one inch barrel. Uh, we shot it a few times. So this, I'm hoping I can dial this rifle in. So. We're going to shoot it a couple of times here. And I know I've had suggestions in the past, get you some uh, binoculars where we can see where it, well, there's a couple of problems with that. Number one, I can't film it from here and share it with you guys. And I won't be able to take my old Sharpie and circle the bullet holes. So let's go see where that went. Okay, this is where we hit. I'm gonna put a one by it. We're going we're gonna to shoot three shots and see what we got without adjusting anything. So, y'all, I'm loading. Same grain, same everything. Uh, I do want to make mention, though, I am cleaning the barrel between every shot. Reason is, is when I go deer hunting, 90% of the time, that shot will be from a clean barrel. Uh, I won't be of shot two or three times, so... I understand the theory of get a barrel dirty and then shoot it, but if you clean your gun and put it up on a shelf and then you load it to go hunting, you're going to be taking your hunting shot, your deer kill shot from a clean barrel. So that is my reason. Uh, now, the next thing right now, all we're, we've done is adjust powders. I understand there's a lot of talk about other kind of patching methods, and, and we're going to try till we see exactly what works. So... I just thought I would mention that stuff while I had it fresh on my mind. I tell y'all what I didn't bring down here with me. And that's a jug of water. Y'all, this in the like 96, 97 all this week. And look at this feather behind me. I'm walking over here and find it. Well, it quit by the time I got on. It was just a twirling when it looks see it. But anyway, next week it's gonna be like 100, 101, 100. Oh Lord. Can't wait for September to get him end of september too well y'all it don't look like we have found what we looking for yet 
but you know we've got all of them on the paper at 50 yards that is a heap step closer than what we was doing we'll get it we'll get it we're just gonna have to figure out what combination we need Well, we're closer to the bullseye, but that ain't much for grouping, is it? So that's three shots with that. Let's, uh, I don't know what I want to do now. If I want to drop down to like 50 grains of powder and try it and see if it tightens up. Or if I immediately want to go to thicker patch material because my overall group, you see that pattern, it's pretty much the same. Now, I will say this. Higher grain powder is higher up. You see an elevation in general. These are the center of this group would be here and the center of this group be down here. So we brought that up would probably attribute to the difference in more powder here, in my opinion. And yeah, I would love to be able to hear what all of you is typing right now. But see, I'll be through with this by the time y'all get that typed and sitting at the house eating a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> uh, I, my mind's screaming at me, thicker patch material. Uh, however, I think I am going to go to like 50 grains of powder, shoot it, see what happens, because we want to shoot. I don't have thicker patch material with me. I do have thinner patch material, but I really don't think that's the answer. Uh, let's go try it and see. Oh, here we go with 50 grains of powder, y'all. Me blowing in that barrel is probably why I can't hit them. All right, so we're going to do, uh, yeah, what we want to mark it as. Uh, let's do, uh, let's do, uh, uh, well, we'll just do four. I do think I'm going to go one, two, three, just to connect those, because I know these went this group. That way I know what's what group. Well, ain't looking like it's getting no tighter, is it? Let's shoot one more All time. Right. Last shot of the day, I think, depending on what happens.
pistol didn't come off. <laughs> I love it. Let's go see where that one went. Like to see that powder smoke floating in the air. Boys, you can smell that sulfur burning. Oh, man. Come on, fall. We ready for you. I had to be honest with y'all. While I was in the middle of filming all that, I called and talked to Uncle Sasquatch for a little while because I'm of the opinion when you're trying to learn something, you need to talk to somebody you feel like knows what they're talking about, and I feel like he does. And we did come up with some with a plan, but I told him it was so hot down here. The coons is out there stringing up the water hose trying to get it hooked up down there. He said, man, he said, it's so hot up there in Tennessee and so dry. He said he saw a bird up there pulling a worm up out of the ground. Said he held it out there and blowed it off before he eat it. <laughs> hey, it's pretty, pretty hot and dry. All right, let's take a... Whoa, now. Pull the top out of my Sharpie. I bet I had black spots on my hand. They'd go with that dye from them knife sheaths. Look at this. So, right here. So, y'all, that is four, five. That is a lot smaller of a group. 50 grains of powder. It got smaller. Now, my shooting could be improving. However, regardless of what happens, I ain't afraid to deer hunt with this. Now, granted, I won't be trying to take headshots, obviously, but at, at, at shooting a deer no further than I'm probably going to be shooting, well, I won't be taking no long shots. But, so, this is what we got. I ain't afraid to, to deer hunt with that. I mean, I can kill a deer with this amount of grouping. This is a whole lot better than what I have, but it is not what I'm looking for. I think I can tighten it down. So just to give you a reference, that's the size of my hand. That group, that last group there to there to up to here, ain't bad. That's 50 grains of powder. Uh, so what me and Uncle Sasquatch discuss is changing patch materials. Um, I'm shooting some old denim. I may order some of that blue pillow ticking. Um, I'm, I'm going to say I'm making bite locally, but I'm going to look for a better patch material, a cotton patch material. And, uh, he told me to go somewhere between 15 to 18 thousandths. So I've got a mic and I may check some stuff I've got. If I find a patch material that I have on hand, we may do another video here in a day or two shooting this thing because I'm, I enjoy shooting some black powder. I've had several people say, hey, when are you going to get into the muzzle loading? Hey, I'm into it. I just, I ain't had time to film everything that's going on. Uh, but I, there is hope for this rifle. That, that thrills my soul because, you know, I mean, and it's just going to take time figuring out what this rifle likes. They're like any other gun. You have to figure out what ammo it likes, what kind of bullet it likes, you know, what powder it likes. If you reload, me and my dad have tried different powders. We've tried different lengths of cartridges, different bullets, and all this stuff makes a huge difference. So this muzzle loader is really no different. Uh, we'll find what patch material works the best in it. I've heard all different kind of stuff. And you know, just because something worked well in your muzzle loader, don't mean that's what's gonna work in mine. So thank you for all the tips i know they'll be coming i encourage you know to tell me what you would try on yours uh however what has worked for you might or might not work for this this is still one of those things that i'm really gonna have to just kind of play with until i figure out what what works uh and we're gonna figure it out hey the longer it takes the more videos you get that's how you look at this <laughs> so be optimistic anyway i am uh i'm fixing to call it quits for today i've enjoyed burning some black powder oh it smells so good uh this old rifle right here though i enjoy shooting it so anyway this is shooting this old rifle this episode today um we'll get it back i'm gonna change some patch material We'll come down here in a day or two. Uh, we may get a bit. I've got to make some round balls, so we'll do that on video and uh, do some more experimenting. 
Thank y'all for watching the Spirit of the Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.